So, hello everybody. Do you hear me well? If there's possibility to switch on your camera, please do it. We are happy to see your faces every time we see you. Oh yeah, Maria, thanks. Hi people. Uh, today we have a webinar of our honored partner because I love Kari very much when you are talking with us. You are great. And uh, Kari has Master of Science, uh, Laboratory of Industrial Economics and Product Technologies. Uh, he works in uh, um, Alto University. He worked for many years, yeah, uh, and Department of Industrial Engineering and Management. And uh, also, Kari uh, orchestrates the um, Urban Mill. You know, it's he's a co-founder of Urban Mill and our partner. Uh, and I think that Kari will show us a lot of beautiful information about this urban mill cluster because it's really great and it works among the university in a very beautiful pace also. And Kari? Yeah, thank you. So it's nice to see you again. So now this time I try to tell something about our own activities and I start to share my screen so you can then see what I'm I'm doing here. So do you see now the, the presentation? Yes, we we see the first slide of the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I tell a little bit about and share our experience of the orchestration of the innovation ecosystems. And the perhaps the main main message is that, that that's a collaborative human effort. Something like has said also be, before in Mattis and Jarmo's presentations and also in, in Lauris in the beginning. And I take the case of, of uh, Urban Mill and then Espo Innovation Garden where, where we are situated. So I show you first here. This is, do you see this now? Yes, Kari. So this is where we are. This this area where this is there on the right is the uh, Alto University Campus and State Research Center. So that's the uh, biggest innovation uh, uh, area in the Nordic countries. And then we have here the big international companies like Nokia used to be here and we have the Microsoft, etc. there, and also big Finnish companies. And then startups like uh, Angry Birds and that type of thing. So it's there. And then we have a third area, which is Tapiola area, which is uh, a garden city it, uh, built in 50s. And now when we talk, when we talk about Espo Innovation Garden, we talk about this, these three different things, Tapiola, Keilaniemi, and, and Otaniemi. And it's wonderful because this is a, this Tapiola is culture and people, uh, city services, etc. And then this is global businesses and this, this is innovation. And if you now look around, we have also here it's it's a area which a natural reserve area it's close to us so that we have uh, it's european natural area and when you look there there is estonia there on the other side of the sea and helsinki is here so that there up you see the city center and the other universities etc so that's that's where we are and and I show you where is Urban Mill. So we are here. So a little bit. These buildings here, this is Urban Mill. This is Startup Sauna, which is the biggest uh, European uh, startup hub of the students. And this is Design Factory. And we call this Innovation Alley. So we come from here. but. Uh, are connected to all kinds of activities on the, on the area. So I, I go away from here and go back to my presentation. So that's, that's my context. And then I, I tell a little bit now also about Urban Mill later. Uh, 
about my own background, why I'm, I'm so keen in working in, in this Espo Innovation Garden is that, that I've been here 30 years. So I started with working in, in 80s, late of 80s in the Engineering Society of Finland, where the, that was a national things with all the companies and all our members. Now there's 70,000 members in that organization. But from that, I came then to the, the Helsinki University of Technology and coordinated six years a change program where we had all our institutes of technology in Finland, 30 of those and the technical universities. And the aim of that was then to make them more international, use the, the new knowledge and digital means. So, and, and that was a wonderful uh, way to learn how the businesses act, act and how the education and cities do in different parts of, of, of uh, Finland. But from that, it was quite, and this was early 90s. So uh, one issue which came raised there up was the digital technologies in the beginning of the 90s. Internet hasn't, wasn't grown on that time, but we still did learning technologies quite a lot. So we started to, to, to do in the European context, e-learning and e-collaboration, the social media things. And then 1993, when the internet broke out, we concentrated fully on that. So we had a, in the, in the late uh, 90s, there are a unit where we had almost 100 different EU projects going on. And we, you know, we played with the technology and did all kinds of things, what you can do with the digital technologies and learning and working. So, for example, on that time, 1996, we did uh, European, orchestrated in a European virtual university where there were 80 faculties uh, all over the Europe. And that was used all the technologies from satellites to internet. So it was quite nice learning experiment. But then after that, uh, also the internet went to the society. So in late 90s and 2000, I was working a while for the Finnish Innovation Fund. And what we did there, we looked how, what's the effect of the internet, the digital technologies to the society. And that was start of the human centric thinking there. So we had a large conference in Finland where we looked the effects and impacts of the technology in, 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 in the society. Uh, <clears throat> what happened on that time too was that, that all those uh, innovations, what we did in the university, all, all Finnish universities regarding the learning technology, they were emerging and in 2003, we had 200 companies in Finland which did something with the learning. They could be technology providers, content providers, service provider, providers, or big companies like Nokia who had internal e-learning things. And on, on that time, then I, I was uh, then developing in this, again, in, in Otanjem area, the e-learning ecosystem of of, of Finland with these 200 companies. And that was quite le learning experience because learning was the first area where the content really, we, we, we saw all the challenges which are uh, coming when you take new technologies. And one, one thing was there was that, that <coughs> uh, what we found was difficult already was that, that uh, the companies and the organization couldn't use and deploy the, the new technologies. So we had to do quite a lot of work on that to go inside companies who were the, you know, the users of the ecosystem services and help them to, to make the cultural change. It wasn't a technological change at that time. The cultural change, how to use uh, uh, digital media better. And, and from that, and then emerged the need of that, that, that we saw that we should do something, with how we innovate. So in 2006, we, I was part of the uh, European team where we established the living labs and the whole living lab movement. It started a few years before that already, but we launched the uh, European network of living labs in 2006 in Otaniemi. And that was the, the, the idea there behind was 
that you have to bring the people into the process of doing innovation. Before that, it has been quite a lot of push type of thing where in the laboratory you did something, tested it and put it in the market. And we calculated on that time that 90% of the, all the digital services were not functioning from the people's point of view. So you had to do, do something. And the Living Lab movement is still going on. Uh, I was responsible of the three first waves, so that the 150 Living Labs globally on that time. But now it's, it's, it's further on. Uh, through that Living Lab movement, by the way, we were also together with Jarmo Suomen, who was on, on, on Monday here. We noticed that it's important to get the, the cities and the people in the cities and their normal life into the process of doing innovations. So from that on, we started to saw that, okay, the uh, regions are those, one of the sources which give the information, the content. And in 2011, then together with Lars Miki, my colleague, there was started a program called uh, Energizing Innovation Ecosystems, which was in this Espo Innovation Garden. And part of that was also putting together a collaboration and co-working space. And we noticed that on that time that uh, all these things, what we had learned during the years, were difficult to push on the market. And then we start, started together with uh, La Sainte, uh, City of Espo and Alto University, put that in the reality. And that was the way how Urban Mill was started. And now uh, that was a background. And now I tell a little bit about that, what is happened there. First of all, we are situated in Espo, which is part of the capital area, the Helsinki region or Uusimaa region. About one third of the population is living there. So it's, it's an important part of the, the city. Uh, there you see it also in the Europe. We are in the southern, southern uh, Finland. Uh, Espo is an international city. We have over 110 nationalities here. It's all the growth is nowadays coming from uh, international people who move to Espo and within these big companies and, and students, etc. And Espo Innovation Garden, this area which I showed in the beginning, is the innovation hub of the whole Finland. So it's it's the biggest innovation hub in 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 in, in Nordic countries, and we have calculated that almost half of all innovation activities in Finland are somewhat related to this area. So it means that if we can work here well, we are connected to, to Finland and, and also then to Nordic countries and globally. So this is a little bit for Espo, city of Espo. So not so many know that because we are part of the international, this is the Helsinki region. So there are four cities, Espo, Vanta, Helsinki and Kauniainen, you see there. And Espo is the, the technology hub of the, the capital area. It's the second largest city in, in the Finland. And, and as you see, if you look at the figures, so there's a lot of people. We have 16,000 students, 400 professors, then many, many RD centers, 5,000 researchers, etc. Et and there's startup, one startup growing every week or two, two perhaps per week. So it's, it's quite dynamic area. The great thing in the Espo is that, that in the values of city of Espo, uh, this participatory public-private city planning is, is part of its, its, its way of doing. It's an ecological, economical, ethical city. So that, that reflects those values to things what Espo does. And culture is quite important. But now well, I concentrate on this Tapila Otanemi, Keila Niemi, and tell a little bit about that, how the innovation is orchestrated here. But first, why? As you see that I have the line there, think local, act global. So that do something which is meaningful 
for local people, but in the same time provide it globally. I think that's quite a lot what we do in the whole city. And and now why why to orchestrate innovation? I go now through some background thing about that. First of all, I think that we have stepped into the post-normal VUCA area. Uh, so that means that 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 uh, things are changing quite fast and you can't control it. This is something about the VUCA. VUCA is volatile. This is uh, US Army uh, uh, introduced the term in, in, in 90s for the war warfare thing. But nowadays it's so that the, the whole economy it's quite confusing so that it's it's thing which the term which has came during the last five years and, and management term too so VUCA means volatile so things are they are not stable they go up and down that means that you need vision in order to handle that things are also uncertain you can't predict any more things how they go you can't plan them that way so that means that in order to live that type of place, you have to understand better how it functions, how the ecosystems function and so on. Then things are complex. There's quite a lot of new players, multiple players, people, organizations, which are working together. And now it's difficult from the one actor's point of view you need clarity there. What's your role? What your processes? How we connect to each other? So the clarity is important. And then it's ambiguous. That means that it's multifaceted. It it looks different the the world from different angles. If you can remember the old elephant metaphor, where people were looking, blind people were looking elephant, and one took from the tail, and said that okay, this is this is a snake another took in the uh, from the food and said that okay this is a, a tree etc so that's the difficulty that even we deal with the same things it's it, it's different from the different angles and Stoboid has to told the same thing as a post-normal era and and that does that in that type of things the organizations have to be fast and loose they have to uh, reconfigure or organize them around the social net networks, not so much in the business processes as before. They they should be more uh, decentralized, and then the autonomy uh, increases and it's more self uh, people oriented. And and from the our people point of view, it means that we don't we we feel that that we belong to our networks which are my network my network not so much to the institutions and and so on so that's a challenging thing so the main thing what is there is that you can't the predictability is 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 not low so you have to do things without the predictions what is the future it's not any more linear as it used to be. We had, for example, in the digital of things, the water waterfall model that you, you just did the things uh, in, in sequences and started from something and then it was ready. Now we have lean startup methods and all kinds of other things which are not non-linear. They are recurring iterative things. And then there comes every day new unexpected combinations of competencies and business models. That's happening every day. You, if you do a good model for you, you notice that next day there will be somebody from somewhere in the globe who do the same kind of things or even better. And, and that means that the, the legacy networks, the, the, those old net, uh, organizations, which used to be big and, and strong, they are in challenges. So I come back to that. So that that means that we have seen that the old operational models don't fit to the new, new reality. They are too, you know, rigid for that. Uh, we see also that that before the the inst institution had the innovation departments, and and it was more institutionalized the innovation. But now it's people from different organizations who do innovations together. And what then motivate these people? 
what is why they do it. So it, it, it especially in the younger generation, you see that things have to be meaningful for them. So that then people engage. So they do things which are important for themselves. And another thing is that, that for example, when I, I was studying uh, on that time, we did individual work quite a lot. Our tasks were individual tasks, etc. But that doesn't work anymore. We need multi-talented and multidisciplined teams. And you see that, for example, uh, in Alto University, which is our collaborative partner, almost all things are done in teams. Individuals, of course, they are important, but the teams are better. And now during the, this corona time, we have seen it already that uh, what is that uh, where people work? They, they don't work anymore only on, on the, in their working place, but they are platforms, they can co-work spaces, homes, digital platforms like this Zoom, uh, which are connected, enable people to contribute. That means that we can be quite uh, heavily distributed. We don't have to be in the same place anymore. And what is emerging is, is that, that entrepreneurial thinking in, in, in public organizations, private organizations, in, in uh, learning life and in startups, that's emerging. And through that also new ways and models, uh, business models, operational models is coming. And, and in that, where those then are, those are evolved in the ecosystems of different companies and networks of the people. So I see that so that the, what are the future and today all the working context are ecosystems networks. Your own organization is only part of that. You can work with, with different organizations, so speak, different communities. But still why we have to orchestrate things is that, that because this is changing, there are still these systemic gaps. There are gaps between things and they have to be filled. And they are quite wicked things because you have to combine so many different things. Of course, platforms, uh, like if you think like Uber or Airbnb and things, they have solved them in some niches, but there's a lot of things which is still have to be done. And perhaps the last thing in this list is that, that I see this time as uh, ambidextric time. It means that you have to be two-handed or many-handed. It's not enough that you do one thing in that time. So in this presentation, I try to say that, that you have to think local, do meaningful things there, but build, build in the same time global impact. Both things, not... Uh, one on either one. And the same uh, means that you have to make efficiency in the organization's efficiency processes, service processes, but then in the same time build the future. So now coming to the cities, as we all know that, that uh, now over 50% of the people are living in the cities and in the near future, it's two thirds of the whole population is there. And, and cities have always been the creative hubs of the world, not only in this time, but, but they have been before. But now it means that when the, the amount of the cities is coming, we have more and more creative hubs which compete with each other. And now the question why I try to tell you is, is how, how to orchestrate innovation in the city and in the, in the local context. So I share those experiences, what we have. Of course, there are many, many ways of doing it, but perhaps we have learned something during the years here. So now I first show you something. Uh, we have been working, I have to say, we, we work with the city of Espo, the Aalto University, the Engineering Society of Finland, and the research, State Research Center, and about 1,000 uh, organizations other. And we have been doing in collaboration project with different players. And, and now I show something what we did, did together with KPMG and, and City of Espo a few years ago. This is a short video.
The Frictionless City, Dynamics of Innovation Ecosystems. Often, we see distance from others as prohibitively inconvenient, leading us to stick with the old and familiar. Even when we are struck with inspiration, that inspiration remains trapped with little way of coming to fruition within the communities of like-minded people in which we work. And often, we're unaware of possibilities that may reside outside the box. However, when strangers meet, fortunate coincidences can occur. City government can actively enable such encounters, for instance, by arranging events and creating physical, social, and digital spaces. This allows all sorts of people to interact and share ideas, create new knowledge, and get motivated to act on ideas. Such enabling services are affordances that the city government can use to direct innovative energy in pursuit of societal goals. In other words, the government would invest in such things as co-working tools, workshop facilitation methods, hackathon events, orchestration services, and digital knowledge refinement applications in order to guide activities towards common goals. They form innovation platforms in which knowledge about innovative ideas are held, fostered, and made available for collaboration. Collaboration that is based on mutual commitment to common goals is the best practice of innovation ecosystems. Smooth interaction, openness, transparency, trust, and confidence are prerequisites for successful co-creation. The city government's role would be to remove friction that prevents success. The city government's active enabling role helps create new knowledge and new markets. Developing innovation platforms and transforming innovations into sustainable 21st century urban services brings business opportunities and value to citizens and enterprises. In a city without friction, anything is possible. So that was something what we co-created with the city of Espo. Many of those things which city Especially presented. Urban services brings business opportunities and oh, value to. to citizens and Going back here, so uh, something and city of Espo has been eight years what Urban Miller has innovated in a main partner. And I want to emphasize that, that we do things together with, we can't do anything alone. So that we do together with the city and Alto and all the people which are together with us. This is just to show you that Espo strategy is uh, they call it Espo story and that's built together with citizens thousands of people have been contributing to this all the city thing so the city really works so that they engage people there and now we work together with different programs now there's going on participatory Espo program inspiring dynamic Espo program sustainable Espo and healthy Espo and those are the means which connect the different dots there so that's that's our background from the, the area. So we are Urban Mill is a platform which supports and facilitates this co-creation Espo Innovation Garden. We work, of course, globally too, but the main focus is there. And we bring together the chain make change makers from public and private sector and individuals. That's one thing, important thing. Then another thing is this shared co-learning process, so that we see that first step of, of working there is share learning and and that's the basic of all things then of course the entrepreneur thinking is one important thing so that we want to work with the people who are entrepreneur minded and then use the digital tools there uh, the activities are bottom up they are open so that we try to open all things even if we have customers in our premises we uh, ask them to open their processes and then participatory and then what about that I'm, I'm working at a small architecture company and and we run this platform for our uh, our our partners so we are public private people partnership we have all those 
four elements there. So that's thing. And important that we are close to the State Research Center and Aalto University. Uh, in this slide, I, I really left to something what Jarmo said already on Monday, that okay, you have to work from bottom up. And this right side is about that. It's quite easy to, to work with people and engage them if they are allowed to do things what they is meaningful for them. But on the left side in the same time is the organizational structure which is there. And they have those uh, processes and existing things which prohibited a little bit what you do. So when we started Urban Milk 2012, we discussed quite a lot of this and we try to be there between. So we are the boundary object and, and make processes which combine these two things. And that was the same what Jarmo said that you have to have the both things. And we try to figure out like that. So it means that it's quite, it sees quite complicated what we do. So that we are in the same time a community with the open doors. We have a platform, a place where people can come and do what they do. We are an ecosystem node. That means that part of organizational structures, which are global, and then we are global hub. So we try to impact globally also, even if we do local things. And that means that in this picture, you see that little bit about how, how what are our stakeholders. So we have said that we have eight different stakeholder groups. The most up there is the people. They, we see that the people are the most important uh, stakeholder. And in the under, there are, are the cities and regional authorities. And th but then we have all the like enabling environment, buildings and construction companies. We have scientists, research, learning, innovation, business developers, and all the, the, the different kind of normal organizations. And we bring them together and they do it voluntarily. And there you see things that they have been over 150,000 people participated or engaged in the things. We have had 15,000 global or national visitors who, who benchmark and bring us new knowledge, over 4,000 events there, etc. 100 teams and startups have some way related to us and be working with us. And what we try to do, of course, they do their own things, but we contribute to that what they do. So we facilitate it some way. First, we engage them when they come in. We curate a little bit that what they do, uplift so that and help them to get customers and orchestrate then the whole hub in inside the innovation ecosystem. And that's something I can't tell really what it is because every second is different. It depends on that to whom you talk or with whom you you work. And we have seen, for example, with Lars, who is also on the line, so that sometimes when we have this, we have these 50 own startups who have used in our services and paid for that also. Uh, when you we come in the morning, we look at, okay, people are uh, wrong places. So they have changed, for example, the staff there because they have noticed that they can do better things doing that. So you can't predict that it, it, it just happens. And if, if we think from the value creation point of view and orchestration point of view, we see that something has happened. So this uh, picture tells about that, how we see the customers, that's another, and what is the critical competence. And if we go to the lower uh, left end, that's the old push type of industrialism, where you product something and then you push it to the market. The uh, customer is just receiving it. They can't affect to that. In 60s, 70s, when we started to do service businesses, then it was more, the competence was relationship so that you can uh, uh, connect with your customers and they are source also, so that the, you do the service together with them. But now when we have stepped into 21st century, it's more that that uh, we see that the customers are co-producers. So we get something from them and we give something with them and then we do something combining the whole things together. So it's more organizing the value creation is the competence, not anymore to product efficiency something, efficient something. 
And we are now trying to, to, to work with these reconfiguration value creation systems and orchestrate that. But in the same time, we have still the service of things and on the platform level, this production of, of things. Uh, we, so when I said in before that the, uh, this local global thing, that we think that uh, we can co-create locally meaningful and globally connected innovation hub. So we need both a national thing and a local thing and international thing. And now there we have to now ask that, that how, how uh, this local knowledge, which from in Finland comes from Aalto University, VTT, can completely support the en entrepreneurial efforts, how we can bring them together. And uh, then how the local knowledge can be complemented by global knowledge like Ukraine, etc. So we have to be there too. And then how the how the entrepreneurs, when they get this local and global knowledge, how they can exploit it globally and leverage it there. So we try to always help our companies to be always global. So and and that's that's the mindset what we have. And and we we see that uh, it's in our case the entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneurial ventures what they do and then to be connected with the global knowledge it's important for that we talk about root rootedness so that we believe on that 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 i showed the first the or the eight different stakeholder groups. We should do something together on the on the local level. We call it sticky knowledge. It's something that you can't take from us. It's it's happening between your people. It's there. And, and that makes trust and etc. which builds a stronger community. And but in the same time when the people work on the local level, there have to be strong linkages with the co-located actors in their companies or other countries or in projects like in this, all the customers, suppliers, alliance partners, all kind of things should be should be taken there. And this is my old colleagues, Yves Dos, I was working at the, the Skiers Center for Knowledge and Innovation Center 20 years ago. Uh, he's working in SED. And this is how, if I think that the normal university way was that, that you do generic things, explicit knowledge, which is quite simple, the knowledge pieces, and then you use it in, in practice and then look at how, how the customers see and perhaps there are experience uh, things like that coming, coming out. So that you start with the simple and then you got the complex. But how we try to do now in this uh, complex innovation ecosystem is so that we start from the existential knowledge, the, the, so that the people together make something for themselves and come down there on the right side to the, the, the explicit simple things and make clarity so that it's, it's some way put the whole system on, on, the, on the other way. Uh, this is a, a systemic way of thinking how we think. Now the, the urban mill and the co-working space is in the middle. And we see that the main 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 uh, purpose of our existence is that that we help people to energize together in order to do new innovation things, and we enable that by giving them tools and services, and the, the things are done by the people. So we we did research in ten years ago about that what is important. And we found that there are three different elements what the co-working spaces should do. One is supporting co-learning so that people learn from each other and you support that. That's quite simple and that has been a long time. But then the second thing is that you support co-design. And in co-design, we mean that, that the teams have some common objects and they do some object oriented things. Learning can be individual, but code design, it has a direction. And there you can use all the code design uh, methods, etc. And that's that's that has been around 20, 25 years already. But now what we then notice that what is a one problem in, in these innovation communities 
and, and many, many for research pro projects in the European community, is that, that there is no use of the outcomes of that. So that people just research and develop and, and then they go back and develop something, but that's not implemented. So that's why we took this co-effectuation there. That means that the, the, the places should also help the, the, the ventures to get customers and go to the society. So in, in generic, that is when we are one place, we see that, as you see there, there's Espo Innovation Garden. So uh, we see that because we are thematic place, we concentrate on urban issues, but there are health issues and there are many other things which uh, you innovate, uh, is that, that we have to link together with the other spaces in the Espo Innovation Garden, which do different things. So there are, 30, 40 different thematic places nowadays there. So we work with them. And in the same time, we do that also with in the global context. Now we work with the Kiev and, and, and all, and try to learn what you have done and share what, what we have been doing. And the whole thing there is that we, we work on three levels. One is that, that when there's this global knowledge, which I explained before, uh, we try to help to make from the knowledge new capabilities. Capabilities to do something and implement something. Then when we attract people and we are part of the different communities, uh, we see that those people do new business models. A business model is more important than the product or et cetera, or service. They have to do new ways how it is sustainable in the, in the ecosystems. And then we, we work with the challenges. We try to be part of processes where, for example, this time uh, we uh, do the sustainable development goals and, and through this, then, then make sustainable solutions in the society, which are also global scale things. And then we need these business models and capabilities. So that's something in, in the philosophical level, what we try to do. One important thing is there that we are quite, we are believe on quadruple uh, innovation. So that before we had this triple helix model where public administration, R and D stakeholders and companies were working together, but in the Living Lab movement already twenty years ago when it emerged, we noticed that we have to include also the the, the civil society and people. So in all our activities and also in the innovation garden, these four elements are there. And we believe that the most important and critical is the people so that we work around the people and the others then, then reflect to that. Now I show you a few just pictures. What is your reality at Urban Mill? These are from different times. There in the left upper corner, we did seven years ago biking services where people or we're part of that together with the auto design factory so that uh, self-organized biking services in the city of Helsinki and we tried that in 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 urban Milan in one day we had 150 local bikers doing all things that's one thing then so there the second thing is that we we have all kind of open experiments so we bring together experiments in the Espo days, it's once a year, and bring the developers there and open it to normal citizens so that they can interact with the, with the uh, innovators, etc. And then, for example, the upper uh, innovate, Usima Innovate, is that, that we do the same, for example, with the innovation projects which are on the area uh, in the Helsinki region and bring them together and make interaction. So this is more a learning. Then there are residential forums uh, which are organized in our places. So, and that's the way how the public bodies and the residents talk. And then the, also it's integrated the, the, the uh, university things. Then this uh, beer festival is a good example of that, that students, it's different here, by the way, in, than in Ukraine, that we don't have so much a few years ago, the small breweries. So the students wanted to make change so that we help them to do a small brewery festivals. And they were two times organized by us. So they're 
where for, for 3,000 people on the yards and inside. But then it's also so that they needed us in the beginning so that now they are somewhere else and they, they have upscaled it. But then one thing which is, I think, important also is that, that we don't look the age of the people. So we work with the senior people and children and they're down there are uh, children from three to six years and they have a science theater there. So it's three to four times per year the engineering association brings their grand patterns and, and small children and they play with the science issues. So that means that these open learning activities are for all the, all the ages. Yeah, but then the question how to, when we started, we didn't have any financing. We were like normal, normal uh, startup and we had to do things. We, we knew that there is a need for this type of activity. And then we looked a little bit about around and Professor Saras Saraswati is from, from uh, US, has a effectuation entrepreneurship model. And we used that. And it's quite simple. There are uh, five stages there. One is the bird in the hand principle. So start what you have and use that. What you individual are, what your networks are. So we started with our existing projects and their partners. Then the second thing is the affordable loss principle. So focus on, on the downside. So don't ask the people how much you invest and then you want to be rich, but ask them what you can give to this new venture and this activity, which you don't want to get back. So that means that uh, Olga has been in also in, 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 in uh, Urban Mill. All is circulated. We don't have any, you know, all there are worth of half a million all things there, but people have brought them there. Even the 3D theater is brought there. We haven't paid for that. So the, the whole thing has been to find the ways how get people to give something what you know they afford to lose also, but then they can share the, all the things. Then the, uh, the crazy guilt uh, principle is the third one. That means when, when you are open to all players, that means that they have, when they do things what they want to do, uh, the the situation changes every day. So everyone can contribute to that, what is the outcome of the whole. So we have only the vision what we, we have there. We have a direction of where to go, but how it will be implemented depends on that who is together with us. Then leverage the lemonite uh, principle means that if there are difficulties, yeah, there every time there are, uh, see them as, as possibilities to do, generate new things. Even for example, we had some difficulties with the university in the beginning because they have had sort of money there and they couldn't buy our rent our, our places. We have 1,300 square meters place there. And, and then they said, okay, it's not allowed to rent anything. So we had to change the service as a service. So now, now it's a membership service and they don't rent the, the spaces are part of the service. So that was the Lemonite principle that you change the thing so that it fits to the reality. And then the last thing is, is the worldview, the, the pilot in the plane uh, principle. It means that don't go to the activities where there are too much uh, players with then have to together decide something before something moves. So do things where you, you can decide by yourself and do it fast and then bring others with you. So that's actually the entrepreneurship principle what is used here and also in Startup Sauna and many other places in, 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 in uh, Otaniemi. These are just then, then some experiments. I don't go further there. So we have been with the schools, we have to, done lunch talk concepts. We have for kick bikes in Moscow and Finland, and we have helped them to get their uh, footprint in, in Otaniemi. They, they use our premises. We have done with the regional accounts in digital tools on the mobile phones. 
we have been experimenting with the preschool children about urban farming or bringing people, entrepreneurs from Korea to Finland and uh, have camps here, or was also so that the Montreal Canteen Academy brought their own education to Finland. Or we, we have been doing that type of thing. But what is important in this is that, that we learn every time when those people come to us. So uh, it's, it's every time learning. So now about how, how, how to do then the whole thing. We, we see that there are three levels. There's platform level, which is the physical or digital place. Like now we have digital Zoom platform here. Then we have these communities which are playing on the or working on the on the platform. And then there are ecosystems, the organizations which they are attached. And now I just say that that on the platform level, we have learned that there are six things which you have to do. One is to some way have the memory, which was also in the city of Espos presentation. The, you have the contacts and knowledge and know what has happened and who is doing what. Second thing is to support events. So because the events collect those people who are interested on the themes and when you have good events there, then you the people come together and you have to have a memory what happened there because you have to uh, share it with the others. Then places were working and teams, so that's important. From the, from the events, you find people who are interested in some things and you have to help them to make their, their thing. Normally, the teams have one challenge, at least in Finland, that they try to develop things but not do concrete things. So we push them to do design prototypes and demos and then showing them in, as a living lab to the, their future customers. So that's the four, fifth thing. And then in order to do that, for example, we did some uh, work with, with doctors of health and memory patients one year ago. Then we also opened up the global network which we had. So that the, the platform has to have, these are the, the four or six different services which, which are, are there. Then we have accelerated many of, of the places. I take only there in the upper upper right corner. We a few years ago looked all the co-working spaces in the capital area. There were 60 on that time. And in order to get access to other knowledge too, so we are network with them. We we do things also in their premises and they people visit us. So it's important to not be closed but be open. And what that means in our thing, we, we have been uh, escaping the pipeline thinking. Normally, work happens quite a lot in, in the silos. So in our case, it's more command and control type of thing. And in the platform thinking, we make more collaboration so that and engage people. Uh, we prefer more, more entrepreneurship and, and collective type of thing than institutions and through that get sustainable ecosystem thinking. We don't believe so much on project management in the traditional way, but on the serendipity management. So how you handle different things. Then you can do disruption, new things which are not there. And then we are more not pushing type of things. We are more working and learning with the others get diversity and and not it used to be brokers between the different players now we have more that community building things where we can build this new and unique combination of competencies and the last thing there is perhaps that that we are not pushing things on the market we are pulling ideas and supporting them in order to get attraction, gravity, and all kinds of things. So that's a mindset thinking difference. So what it means then, it means, for example, that's that we have been, for example, this is, these are just examples of what we have been doing in different places, is that, for example, there is a smart 
uh, Otani anything where the energy systems are, are, are uh, developed in each city of Espo and big companies. We brought the, the small companies there so that they didn't have access to startups. So that we work with the with the European Space Agency and the Meteorological Institute of Finland. We, we, we helped in the process where new European Space Agency Innovation Center came to Finland, organized the events and pushed that. And, and also we worked in the digital things together with, with, with the engineering association, helped them to facilitate it to get the uh, digital activities on. And, and also the parliament of Finland, they left, they wanted to ha have a new creative thing. And we brought those people who, who do AR, artificial uh, reality and virtual reality. And, and the, actually the, the parliament uh, committee meeting was at Urban Mill. So we put them to do the things what they, they, they normally do, legislation. Of. So that's the way how it then then works. Uh, it's then this is now that the process what I have said that we have we call that the whole thing how it's orchestrated an urban wheel. And and there in the center is human beings people. And as I said before, we help them learn, build and deploy. So that's the whole thing. And it starts from that, from the left, from ecosystems, whatever they are, health systems or education system, there are some problems or ideas. We bring them so that people, we help that to happen, that people start to do their own narratives about the things, how they would like to change it. Then from the narratives are brought to the events where people have broader audiences, other people join. And from those events, then it, it, there, the people find them other like-minded people who build teams which have objectives do something and then do experiments prototypes bring them into the real life and do business models and then back to the ecosystem so that's basically the innovation orchestration process what we have and that that's close to close to uh, also uh, design thinking and that type of thing. So it's not new, but it's our way of doing it. And we can start it from whatever round. We can start it from teams and go to the experiments. And there is that, that there is in the same time learning and doing. And perhaps one important thing what is there is that, that there's a distinction what you can do with the people in the upper right corner and what you do with the institutions. So when we go and start the process, we start with the people, but then we some way try to build the bridge between the institution through the prototypes. So that then when the experiments are done and, and the product is done, then it's more institutional. So that's one important thing. But then the other thing is that, that as I said in the beginning, that it's important that it's meaningful for the people. And when you start to work with the people, you have to, it have to be meaningful for them. But then when you bring the, the, the prototype of a thing into real life, then it's context dependent so that you have to do things which fit to the context where you work. So we have to always have this ambidextrity of different angles. And that's challenging. I don't know how it happens, but sometimes it, it looks that if you, you just are supporting that from bottom up and you have a vision it in some way works. I show you now one video, you don't have to listen to me. So I show what happens in, in uh, let's, this is an example of projects which use our spaces. We haven't done this, but we haven't have enabled this. This is in Finnish, but you see what kind of those activities are. Thank you. 
So you see that our activity is like that, so that we enable, are part of that enabling different people in Finland and do things which are quite practical, experimental, etc. So that was just one thing what has happened. And our, our everyday life is, in the best part is like that. So working with all those great people for all of the world. So we used different digital tools for that. I don't go deep into that. But then perhaps going to one, that, this is still um, the, the uh, theoretical thing. But I said before that we don't believe on the old fashioned project management thing, where we have a project, we have a direct and people do things. All is fixed in the backing. It have to be effect, it's closed, and all goal is decided beginning and etc. But what we try to do, and the last the, the video was also that that we help to bring uh, build journey, journeys, exploration, intersectional things where people do together more creative things, so that the organization is done during the process, not in the beginning. We 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 don't uh, focus on on the process, effective process, but a best possible outcome and impact, more open innovation. And then what the guides all the things is the this, uh, vision, what I said before, so that the vision shows and then the people, people can self-organize. So it means that it's flexible and, and the, uh, the management and orchestration is more putting, connecting people and helping them to collaborate. Uh, the time is running. I, I said to Olga that I'm always uh, talking too much, but but I, I just this is what I took the case what Yarmo talked about the the schools. So this this is a list you can look this later. But it means that during the many many years we have been working different way 
with the schools and school children. And for example, we, we hosted the Royal College of Arts uh, workshops before that school as a service project started. And then we have been working with connecting people and students and businesses and teachers together. And that's an ongoing long process we, we, we try to do. And we believe on that, that, that you have to make long-term things, not short-term things. And there we have been doing that on the regional level too. Then this is the perhaps the, the connecting together what it means to orchestrate things. And I, I tell this, this, this is a concept to that. And on, on the vertical, horizontal level, you see that there are those services and users. Those are the existing you know, functions which are in organizations, those who don't work anymore, but still they are ongoing. And that's the main thing what is happening. Then you have these traditional new things, which is innovation, which in, in this is a vertical thing. And now the challenge when you are orchestrating things, you have to fit these, uh, these innovation activities to ongoing activities. And if we first take the the strategic element there. It means there's a lot of things happening there downstairs in the innovation communities, new things happening. Nobody knows, there. it's a lot of, every day comes something. And in the upper thing, there are these, for example, in our case, our mayor from the city of Espo, who is living in the global reality, tries to get more citizens there, more businesses, more taxis, etc. And now he should use this, these innovations. But in reality, the strategy management don't have the power to effect well into operational processes. They go on their own life there, so that they have to have to also, uh, of course, they can push it, but it doesn't work. And now the, if we think that there's some, somebody orchestrating the innovation, we, we see that, that uh, there are five different things what they can do. Uh, should do. One is, of course, that that uh, they have to understand the uh, users, the the future users of innovation, the social meaningfulness on the left, so that they they have some understanding of that. So that is it worthwhile? They have to on the right side understand that better than the service producers, what is the whole holistic context where the people live, so that we call spatial understanding. So that's one, one thing there. But then when they work with the certain management mayors and CEOs, they have to have visionary power to, to imagine futures which doesn't exist and some kind of political leadership capabilities there. And then we, when we go downstairs, where is all the innovation communities, there's so much happening that in order to understand what is there, you have to, we call it cognitive clarity. You have to frame things that when somebody does uh, a, a small part of innovation, how to bring it to the users as others so that they understand it. So, and now we are coming to the good thing from the our project view, we believe that the whole solution for that, where the orchestrators between these powers, there is the agile design. So when you orchestrate, you have to have artificial capabilities, doing something which fits to all these realities. And that's a good thing, it's, you, you can do it, then you can orchestrate. But the bad thing is that's not easy task. So to orchestrate there, you have to some way be able to, to communicate to four different worlds. And that's the challenge. And that's why I think this work is never ending. It's, it's, it's all over there. And that means, for example, in our case, we have used this so that we have been the left working with the regional authorities. We have done orchestrated for our government, for example, a startup ecosystem development or innovation ecosystem. Uh, thing and be part of control just we do that and then we have used this orchestration capability now we are bringing the model we are there otani Mikaela, nimi left down corner we are bringing the concept to other places too 
and try to do it, help the other, our collaborators to do it in other parts of the, of the, of the city. And now the one, one good thing, what we, I, I'm so happy that we, what we can do in these projects, we do uh, a design hackathon for creatives, designers and startups. So that will be in late August, what we do together with Kiev, et cetera. And you all are invited there. It's not yet there. We are preparing and we try to, to launch it before next week, but that's the next phase. So where we try to then somewhere share things and put different players together. So, sorry, it was longer, but anyway, that was our story about the orchestration. And I'm so happy to, 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 to share things and discuss further. And then hope that, that during our next phases, uh, then we can do real life things too, together. So Olga, if you take from here. Yeah, Kari, um, do you hear me now? That was great. And uh, for me, it's special memories from the visit in Alto University. And that was a great trip and a lot of impressions uh, and everything. And I saw that you have huge hub a lot of equipment, uh, a lot of startups there. And also I wish to ask you, you also made the advertisement of the uh, Ultra Hack and Hackathons. And uh, how many startups uh, do you work with, uh, like the part of this project? Tell us, please. In, in general, we work with all startups who want to work with us. <laughs> so, but, but we have had, there are 50 in our own community which pay something for us or have paid but then there are on a few hundred teams 200 teams perhaps which we have been working they all are not not all you know ready made they, they are more ideas of the new startups they do product uh, prototypes etc but then for example we had in uh, part of this project an event virtual event two three weeks ago where we had 150 startups from the Alto University Startup Center, which were together. There were 205 people attending that. Part of those were startups. So generically, we, we try to work with these who are close to us. They are the mainly. And there's uh, 2,000 companies within the mile from, from uh, Urban Mill. And we could say that 500 of those are early states companies. Mm -hmm. oh, well, huge numbers actually for us, especially. And uh, can you see the chat right now, Kari? Because there are some questions for you. I have to, I, I stop my presentation, then I. Yeah, you can enter the chat. Yeah. And uh, yes. also, I see that uh, Vladimir uh, have, uh, has a question to you. Vladimir, are you still with us? Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, Kari, uh, thank you very much again for another great lecture. And I have a question, basically, uh, what is your personal as opinion as an expert? Uh, what, must, uh, what would be the most effective point of influence to uh, to bring the idea of new management approaches actual for big corporations. Uh, it's a challenge. Thanks. Good question. Perhaps one thing is making a business case. So it it means that first of all you have to bring them something in that language what they understand. So. So, and then the business case and how it makes more efficient or better their they own processes is important. So that's uh, the first thing. But then another way of thinking is so that what we actually do in the autonomy, not only we, but many, many others like Design Factory, which was had the presentation before, we engage them into the processes and projects where there are new methods used. So they are there and they see and feel that how it's done. If I think, for example, hackathons, they started 
eight years ago, something less, a little bit less than 10 years ago. And, and when the big companies came into the hackathons, first, those were more the, 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 what they did, they were outside of the key processes of the, the companies. But then the big companies came there, gave, gave some money there and challenges. But then they learned quite fast. They saw startups and the teams. They, they learned that, okay, that's a good thing because they were participating there. And now I, I, I could say, I don't know the real uh, numbers, but there are quite a lot inside uh, startup centers inside the companies and hackathons and all kind of things, which were before done outside when they participated. So they learned through doing. Did, did that answer anyway your question? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, thank you. So uh, I see basically the point of view that uh, often the stories of uh, big companies' participation and their uh, opinion and view on all that, oh, hackathons, okay, funny toys you have, okay, we have billions. Uh, and how your funny toys can <laughs> can help us make more billions. But uh, obviously, uh, and they are also knowing that there are great problem with management uh, and inter interconnectivity inside big corporations, but still many of them are uh, their point of view to the innovations and basically management innovations and startups as just as, as funny toys. But I think it is, it is time, uh, the worldwide crisis, uh, pandemic, maybe, maybe that can be triggers that will actualize this problem and make it uh, done faster. Thank I you. Yes, uh, add something. When we work with the city of Espo, and as I said there, I talked about smart autonomy project. That's a state research center led project where there's other university, the city of Espo, and all the biggest uh, energy companies in Finland. That actually started from the need of the city. They said that they have want to have more sustainable energy and things like that and they would invest to that type of thing and they mm -hmm. were initiating that and now because it's the, the figures are huge so for example we have the deepest hole in the earth seven kilometers and it, it gives 10 percent of the the heat energy when it's ready and there was you know the need thing that they they could generate business but in this case the city of Espo was an important role and they do the same thing with the central heating and all kind of, of things and and electricity things so also the public bodies can if they are wise they can take these big companies as startups together and bring them a, a you know test based or place where they can learn to do new things together uh, I get the point. Thank you again. Many thanks. <laughs> I am very inspired and uh, very, very useful materials. Uh, again, thank you and thank uh, thanks uh, to Heaven Alto and Urban Mill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, friends, do you have some more questions? It seems to me that Andrei Kokorin wrote something um cool conscious shift thanks uh okay um do anybody want to add something because i have question to carry also carry uh, how do you think uh, this pandemic situation will influence uh, to the future um growing of these startups and their interaction in your hub um how did the life changed or it doesn't it has changed. I think there are two ways of reacting to that. And there are, there are companies and startups who are in difficulties and, and, and those who are more property related, that type of thing. So they are in difficult situations. But in the same time, we have seen that the digital companies and those who are agile and do new things, they flourish. So that actually this has opened up things what was impossible before. So that there are those who benefit a lot of this 
because they have solutions for that type of thing. And, and I believe that as from the digital services point of view, this, this has been a positive effect to those companies and services and contents who do, do it. But, but then from the cultural activities and that type of things where, where there are physical events, they, they, have, they are in terrible situation. So they are both good and bad things. Yeah, we have the same situation, it seems to me, with uh, our teams and startups. Actually, we have not so much of them. Um, Kari, and uh, uh, what kind of technologies maybe would be uh, popular in the nearest future um, in your hub? What is the most uh, important maybe for these startups? What do they want to see there? Uh, it's a difficult question, exactly. but there are so many levels. But one is that, that of course, if you the startups need always income, they need customers who pay something right away because they are always short of money. So you need some technologies which you can use and apply right away. So in, that means that existing technology, that's one way of doing it seeing it but then in the same time if you are do strategy things then of course 5g networks artificial intelligence all that type of things are important but i think that some of those are overhyped now so that if you listen the experts of for example ai the many of those things what we see here they have been a long long time the automation and things like that and many big things wait 10 years or something before the AI solves something what we people can do. So that there is overhype things. And, and I, I, for example, the, the, um, the, the practical applications uh, from the AI where there are, where you can do already solve something are more automation type of thing than artificial intelligent things. And those are important. How do automize things which were done before uh, by, by, by uh, hand or something. Mm -hmm. And then another thing is that uh, how you combine technology. Perhaps I think that that's the most valuable thing that how you combine different technologies, old technologies, digital things, new things, and new make new combinatory innovations. And I some way believe that most of the big things in the near future will be combinatory innovations. And then of course you build the basic technologies for food products or material products, etc., for health, etc. But how do you combine things and do new combination of the existing technologies and services and customer base? Uh, and uh, could you name some divisions or how many divisions uh, do you have uh, at Alto University? I mean that uh, you have engineering, you have IT technologies, uh, medicine, what else? Uh, can you name maybe a couple? So, uh, first of all, uh, we uh, Alto is our partner. I do my PhD there at Alto, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm in the small company. They have six departments there so that they have arts, they have uh, engineering, they have a science, they have the chemistry. Now I have to, uh, they have, uh, Lars, do you remember what was the last one? Are you still there? Yes, uh, sci our arts, science, uh, business school. Yeah, yeah, business school, For, of course. So those are the main, main things, but the, the what Alto, uh, I have to tell something about that, what Lauri said already. It's a merge of uh, uh, University of Arts and Design. So it's, that was one. Uh, in, in Helsinki University of Technology, there was only architecture department. Then it's the business school, which they all have established in 1800 something. So they are old schools, but they were merged 10 years ago together. And the whole big thing in art is that you do multidisciplinary things. Mm -hmm. So 
the the departments of course they do their own specific and, and and narrow things but how you combine that is the the key there and i think that the arts department uh, which is globally in many areas now do uh, inside the number 10 so that in the global you know that has brought the most for it not so much the technology not so much the the the, the uh, business but that gives the creativity and when that's combined with the technology and with business then it makes success mm, yes you are right and i remember that uh, splendid uh, exhibitions and also museums of art in helsinki yeah it, it tells about many things and engineering and technologies also but it's everything is art so but one thing that i i'm still missing in outer context is the humanities there are philosophy and that type of thing what lauri does there etc but there, there should be more humanistic things because i believe that the great challenges come from that area so that the, perhaps in the future there would be more uh, collaboration with the University of Helsinki, which is tradi traditional humanistic university and, and, and life sciences, and then Aalto. And they do it already on the urban side, so that they have collaborative programs where, where the University of Helsinki has the, you know, the humanistic side and the urban development from the, the, the nature point of view, and put that together. And I, I see that that's, that's a great thing. Kari, you are splendid as ever because you have a lot of ideas and thoughts, and uh, I believe everything will will be realized in the nearest future. Thank you. And I hope for the great future for our project also because I know that you did a lot of things, and uh, I hope that uh, our participants will see it in a month, uh, and also will uh, combine some new ideas with uh, with your teams and with your startups. Uh, I hope for that, and I believe that would be great. Some, it would be great to see you here too when the, the corona epidemic is away. So that please, I invite you all to visit us. We are happy to show because we are just a small player at Urban Mill, but the huge community around is, is wonderful. Mm, yes, the community is actually very splendid. Uh, and we have seen nothing like that. I hope we can share this experience and um, guys so say hello to Kari who just switched your cameras yeah Kari and now we have to give you a rest because I know that you you are sitting here for two hours so yeah thank you and thank yeah. you for you all we see in then in the next lesson too. I'm not attending all the lessons, but almost all. I think you can uh, see it in YouTube channel uh, because we have a lot of interesting information for you also Yeah. about our creativity and Ukrainian startups. Yeah, so thank you and Lars, bye bye. Lars, Kari, thank you and see you soon. Yeah, we Wish you all the best. Tomorrow. Thank you for the lecture. Thank you. No, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you.